Hey everyone, welcome to For Car Sake, where I like to talk about the Australian automotive industry. Recently I saw a video by the guy called Electric Viking, and I'm just gobsmacked at the level of bias he has on the local automotive industry. How is it that EV fanatics like him have all the facts but are unable to see the truth? In this video that I saw, he claims the value of lithium has seen a significant decline in value due to the introduction of sodium ion batteries. So let's have a look at what he said. Sodium batteries are destroying the value of lithium, bringing the cost of lithium down enormously. What does this mean for the future of EVs? This means for the future of EVs that EVs will be cheaper much sooner than anyone predicted. And this is BYD and now the second largest battery manufacturer in the world, CATL, are the biggest. Those two companies are pivoting to sodium ion batteries. They say they're 30% cheaper. And they do have some pretty significant advantages over lithium ion batteries. However, most likely the car battery of the future will be a hybrid, a battery that has lithium and sodium, meaning it contains the best of both worlds. This will bring prices down more. It will bring the price of lithium down more. It will bring down the price of EVs even more. So he claims EV prices are coming down sooner than anyone has predicted because of sodium batteries. So let's do some quick facts check, starting with lithium prices. According to Trading Economics, they have indeed dropped by over 50% in the past few months. So hey, lithium ion batteries will have a significant drop in price, right? Um, I don't think so. According to sources I have seen, such as this one, an EV lithium ion battery pack has between 8 to 10 kilograms of lithium. But in a, another place, Elon Musk have actually said a Tesla Model 3 battery pack only has roughly 5 kilograms of lithium in its LFP based chemistry battery pack. At around 275,000 Chinese yuan per ton, this means 5 kilos of lithium is 5 times 60,000 Australian dollars give or take divided by a thousand, which equals the $300 AUD. So the cost of lithium in the battery pack has gone from 600 to $300. Let's say even if we double it to get to the 10 kilos, it's still about $600 worth of cost. So obviously there's no way a sub $1,000 drop in cost is going to make a significant difference on a 50 plus thousand dollar car. Let's listen to more of what he's saying. This is a tsunami. The price of battery packs has already come down 20% this year, and it will come down by at least another 20% over the course of the year. The cost of an EV, around 30 to 40% of the cost is the battery pack. My friends, the EV revolution is here. With the introduction of lithium ion phosphate or LFP batteries, we have indeed seen a 20% cost advantage, something that is true and we agree on. According to which car here, sodium ion batteries could indeed be another 20 to 40% cheaper than lithium ion. And that is not its only benefit. We can see it has a wider range of operating temperature. So that could potentially mean a simpler battery temperature management system it's also simpler to recycle, but the one downfall is a lower energy density. So if both efficiency are comparable, we will need a larger sodium ion battery pack versus a lithium ion to achieve the same driving range. If we scroll further down, we can see BYD is rumored to launch one of its first sodium ion powered mass production car, the Seagull, in 2023. Now this is quite an exciting one. Let's have another look at what the Viking has to say. Therefore the prices will continue to come down. The price of an EV will be cheaper than a gasoline powered car within five years. I used to say 2030 in the West. I've changed that today. It will happen by 2026 at the latest. All right, that's some serious speculation. And if it is true, and that's a big if, in my opinion. According to him, an EV revolution will happen 
by 2026. And BEV will have price parity or even cheaper than the equivalent ICE. However, based on the numbers he's mentioned, it's just not possible. 30% cheaper on a battery pack, that equates to about 30% of the total BEV's cost. It's going to, at most, add up to about $8,000. And yet today, there's still a fifteen dollars to $20,000 price premium on equivalent BEVs. As a consumer, that means there is only one logical thing to do. And that is to refrain from buying any BEVs today. Because whatever you buy today, you'll be hit with a steep depreciation when these quote-unquote significantly cheaper sodium-ion BEVs launch into the market. Will it be a problem with ICE vehicles? Yes, it sure will, but nowhere near as bad as current lithium-ion BEVs, and here's why. Reason number one, sodium-ion BEVs are a direct, cheaper alternative to lithium-ion BEVs. This means when they launch, these lithium-ion BEVs are going to take a significant hit. Reason number two is currently ICE cars are on average fifteen dollars to $20,000 cheaper than its comparable BEVs. Even with a drop in battery pack cost, there will still be a significant difference in upfront purchase price between sodium ion BVs and ICE. More importantly, they are not direct competitors. ICE still has the same benefits over BVs. Lower upfront cost, shorter refueling time, more infrastructure for refueling. Range is not nearly as vulnerable to temperature or additional weight or towing, or while off-roading. You know, overall, I just really hope EV fanatics like the Electric Viking can be a little less biased with the facts. Have another listen here on what he has to say about Toyota. Uh, supply only allows us to have a one kilowatt hour, tiny minuscule laptop sized battery for every EV in the world. You know, I'm going to assume this is a joke because this joke he makes about Toyota hybrid batteries being tiny laptop-sized batteries. Well, I'm not sure if you've seen one before, but here are some images of this so-called laptop-sized tiny battery. I don't know what kind of laptop he has, but that would be a hell of a laptop. Well, anyways, thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to hear more about the Australian automotive industry, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Otherwise, check out these other videos I've done to see whether or not you agree with me? Cheers.